Anatolia, a land of ancient civilizations and mysteries. Anatolia saw the Hittite Empire emerge and rise to power on its land, and wars like the Trojan War were fought on its soil. This land fell under the rule of many influential nations in the region, such as the Greeks, the Romans, the Persians, and the Arabs before the arrival of Turkic tribes from the east that would give Turkey its current name. But this was not the first time Turkic-related people would migrate to modern-day Turkey from Central or Northern Asia, and it was not the first time Turkic-related groups would rule over Anatolia either. The earliest migrations of Proto-Turkic groups to Anatolia and the surrounding regions could be traced far back to the 4th century AD which is two centuries before Islam arose. The Bulgars, which are a semi-nomadic Turkic-speaking group, were allies to the Byzantine emperor Zeno against the Ostrogoth and one of the regions they were documented to migrate to was the Kars province of present-day Turkey. In 504 and 515, the Turkic Sabri tribe held raids against the Caucasus, which was the Sasanian northern frontier. In December 531, many Sabirs were summoned by the Persians to plunder around Euphratesia, Cyrus, and Cilicia, which are located on the south of modern-day Turkey. Many other Turkic tribes would reach Anatolia in migrations or through military conflicts and alliances, but this wasn't enough to change Anatolia culturally. Despite the fact that all these people shared the same language and culture, not all of them identified as Turks. In fact, the Gok Turks were the first Turkic group to use that term as self-identification, but the rest of the Turkic nations kept their own name. This would change when Turks came in contact with Islam and decided to convert to this new religion and therefore identified as Turkmen to differentiate themselves from the non-Muslim Turks that were referred to as Tatars and the non-Turkic Muslims which consisted of Persians and Arabs. From now on, the term Turk would start to become an identity that unified these people. After the conversion to Islam, Turks would start to be an influential power in Western Asia and Anatolia, establishing many dynasties in the region, such as the Seljuk Turks, the Artikid state, the Seltikid dynasty, and the famous Ottoman Empire that had the greatest impact on Anatolia, resulting into completely Turkifying Anatolia by fully conquering the Byzantine Empire and controlling Anatolia as a whole. The Ottoman Empire derived its name from its founder Osman I, and according to Ottoman tradition, Osman's father, Ortegrul, led the Turkic Kayi tribe west from Central Asia into Anatolia, then he ruled the town of Selgut on the Byzantine frontier. But all of this leads to the question, how much did the Turkic tribes affect the gene pool of the modern Turkish people? Genetically speaking, before arriving to modern-day Turkey, 
the Turkic tribes of Central Asia would have been made up of the East Asian component, with a considerable West Asian admixture due to the fact that Central Asia was already inhabited by Western Asians before the arrival of the Proto-Turks. That is why, phenotypically, the Central Asian Turkic nations of today are mostly a mix of Mongoloid and Caucasoid elements. So in order to define how much the Central Asian Turks have affected Turkey's gene pool, we would have to know how much East Asian admixture modern-day Turkish people have, and estimate how much additional original Central Asian admixture these Turks brought with them. It is important to note that the exact genetic makeup of medieval Central Oghuz Turks is unknown, but modern Central Asian Oghuz Turkmen have a higher West Eurasian genetic component than East Eurasian. A 2014 autosomal study on Turkish genetics done on 16 individuals from Turkey concluded that there was a relatively recent migration of a population that carried East Asian ancestral admixture that was estimated at 21.7%. The study also notes a significant amount of South Asian admixture. So, if the Southern Asian admixture was to be associated with the migration of the Turkic tribes of Central Asia, that would make the contribution of the Turkic tribes to the 16 modern-day Turkish individuals reach almost half. And if it was not that case, that would suggest a continuous contact between Anatolia and South Asia at one point of history. It's also important to note that generalizing the results of a study on 16 individuals of a whole nation would be unreasonable. However, an interesting Y-DNA study that dates back to 2008 was carried on individuals from an ethnic Turkish village called Afshar near Ankara. The study concluded that 57% of the villagers had haplogroup L, 13% had haplogroup Q, and 3% had haplogroup N. Considering that haplogroup L reached Anatolia through Central Asia, the study predicts that around 73% of the male lineages on the village are most likely of Central Asian origins. In 2001, Benedetto et al. revealed that Central Asian genetic contribution to the current Anatolian maternal DNA gene pool was estimated as roughly 30% by comparing the populations of Mediterranean Europe. In conclusion, we can confirm that the Turkic migration from Central Asia to Turkey left an important genetic mark on the gene pool of modern-day Turks. 